Hello, I'm Vanessa. Welcome to my kitchen. This is the first time I'm doing a recipe for you on my Beautiful Bites food blog. And it happened to get a little bit chilly. I live in Arizona and it happened to get a little bit chilly today. And so I decided I wanted some yummy soup and I love squash soup. These can be a little bit intimidating sometimes, especially just looking at it. But they are so delicious. It's a butternut squash and they are really buttery. So you can make it so yummy and so scrumptious without using too much butter or too many unhealthy ingredients. So first, we're gonna go ahead and cut into this. Now, it's a little bit difficult to cut into, <laughs> especially if you don't have wonderfully sharp knives. There we are. So you're gonna go ahead and cut the ends off of that. And everybody does this differently, but I like to use a peeler. And so, it's a little bit hard to peel. It's not exactly a fun, glamorous thing. There's no way to make this look pretty. So you're gonna go ahead and peel the squash. It's hard to cut. They're big, solid pieces of squash. <laughs> okay, so we're just gonna go ahead and dice this up. As you can see, I have my pan here ready. I like to use foil and everything just because it makes a really easy cleanup. <laughs> and, um, it makes it much easier to put away. Okay, there's no seeds on this side, so we don't need to deseed this side. So, again, I am not a trained chef, so if a trained chef were watching this, they would probably die if they saw that my pieces aren't exactly the same size. But I tried to do it pretty even. For the way that we're doing this, we're gonna stick it in the oven at a pretty high temperature. So, we don't, um, they don't need to be perfectly equal in size. With this, the easiest way to get the seeds out, just take a tablespoon. I don't know if you've ever carved a pumpkin, but it's very similar to pumpkin seeds. They're kind of stuck in there. You just want to scrape. If a little bit of the fibers are in there, it's really okay because you're going to be cooking. And um, you just want to make sure to get all the seeds out. Here, so it's about three pounds of squash that we're going to go ahead and put in our plate there. And then you want one medium yellow onion, sweet onion, whatever you can find. I'm just not a big fan of white onions. They have a tendency to just not... I just personally don't like the flavor, but that's just my personal taste. Take an so, onion, cut it in half, just dice it up, rough chop like the um, squash. with the squash. Do the same to the other half. Two good sized carrots. These are both probably pretty medium to large sized. They're just going to add a little bit of sweetness to the soup. It's actually not necessary. I just like the flavor that it adds. Go ahead and give those a quick little peel. Usually what I do with these is I'll just cut the thicker part in half and then just kind of do a Rough chop on those. Scatter them in with all that. So now we have a nice little assortment here. Okay. And I'm going to do half a teaspoon of black pepper on here. And I'm going to do a teaspoon of salt. Just coarse. Finally, sea salt. There we are. Then you're going to go ahead and take some olive oil. I don't have an exact measurement on this olive oil, probably just two tablespoons the of olive oil. The delicious vegetables, we have salt and pepper. We have three pounds of squash, two carrots, and one medium onion, all just a rough chop. So about two tablespoons of olive oil. We're going to go ahead and take it. Put it in the oven and let it be our squash and our carrots and our onions are in the oven right now, baking up, softening up so we can go ahead and blend them together. But the base of our soup is actually going to be made out of chicken stock. So we have about three cups of chicken stock right here. Pour it into there. Okay. Teaspoon of white pepper. I have one teaspoon of salt half a teaspoon of black pepper, 
and a quarter teaspoon of paprika. It really brings out the flavor of the squash is going to be a nutmeg. And it's a little nut. <laughs> you can get them in any spice aisle and just a little zester. And we're going to zest about half of the nutmeg into here. So just be careful you don't zest your finger off because I've done it before. It doesn't feel good. We just want to get it warm so whenever we add it to the squash in the blender, it's ready. So there's that. We like to have something to go with it. Sometimes I'll make a homemade crouton, but today I want to make a homemade crostini, and this is something that you can make to go with really anything. They're delicious and they're crispy and they're just yummy. But while we do that, go ahead and come over here and make sure once your um, your chicken broth gets steaming, go ahead and turn it down to low. Again, you don't want too much of that to cook out. We have a great little local bakery here, MJ Bakery, and they are so wonderful. I love their bread. Just went today and got this. I'm going to use one clove of garlic in this, so go ahead and use the back of your knife and break open the garlic. So what I did is I went ahead and I melted two tablespoons of butter. And I went ahead and made a little Italian mixture to go with that. That's a quarter teaspoon of basil, a quarter teaspoon of salt, a quarter teaspoon of oregano, and a quarter teaspoon of rosemary, and two tablespoons of butter. And we have a quarter cup of olive oil. Some people just use butter. I and half Italian. I love olive oil. I use olive oil and everything. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and use that. And then to give it that extra kick, which I love garlic, but I like to use a garlic press just because it makes it nice and small and even. Put a little bit of garlic through there. Cut some of it off. And a little bit more. Cut it off. So there we are. There's one clove of garlic. Mix all that together. It's almost like a garlic bread. This pretty much is what you would do for garlic bread, but I like to make these nice and crisp and thin. So then, and use a bread knife. Let's go ahead and cut into this. So, unfortunately, you can't really use the end for, um, that's for the cameraman. So for the crostini, you want it to be really thin. You can use baguette for this as well because you can make them longer. But you want them to be nice and thin. Otherwise, you're never going to get that nice crispness out of it. Save the rest for later. <laughs> there we are. So then what we're going to do, again, this is very much like a garlic bread. So I'm going to get a little baster brush. We're going to base this delicious mixture on here. Here we are. Just make sure to get it on all the bread. I'm kind of a fiend about making sure it gets evenly on all the bread, not just in the center. Here we are. Watch your bread. And so then you can either use pecorino romano or you can use parmesan. I use, again, a peeler. This handy dandy little peeler can be used for a lot of things in the kitchen. And I went ahead and shaved some, I used Pecorino Romano today. And so, go ahead and just take some of this. Kind of space them around there. It doesn't need to cover it all. You just want a nice little hint of cheese in there. Nothing too overpowering. Especially because you already have salt in it. Pecorino Romano and Parmigiano have a tendency to be a little bit salty. So it's just for that nice little browning bubble on there. So you're going to go ahead and as soon as our squash comes out of the oven in just a few minutes, then we're going to go ahead and put these in while we're blending up the squash. Here we are going to go ahead. Our timer just went off. So let's grab our squash. Mm. Mm. That smells so delicious. So to... We are going to a good test for squash to see if it's ready. See how that just, you can basically push it down. It's and ready. While we're doing this, let's go ahead and now turn our oven on broil. 
so we can get it ready for our crostinis, or our little crispy garlic breads, if you will. Okay. Go ahead and take the rest of the chicken broth. Squash, the great thing about squash is it's a wonderful source of fiber and dietary things and it's healthy for you and it's so yummy. Let's go ahead and put the castrinis in the oven. So now that we have the base of our soup, all the healthy stuff's in there. So now we're going to add the not so healthy stuff. First we have a half a cup of whipping cream. I just use regular whipping cream, not heavy whipping cream, but it's up to you. It just gets a nice bit of richness into it. And then I have two tablespoons of butter. There we go. Let's mix all that together. And then my favorite power tool in the kitchen is my hand blender. I love this thing. If you don't have one, I highly suggest. You can get them for really good deals, and you can use them for so many different things. And for soup, they're ideal. Mm. Let's go ahead and detach that. And here is our delicious squash soup. And just to taste it, in case it needs a little more salt, you never know. Mmm. It's perfect. I smell garlic and cheese and all the delicious things. I think that these are definitely, ooh, nice and brown. Mm -mm -mm. Delicious. There we are. Let's go ahead and serve up our squash soup. Go ahead and get a ladle. There we are. So there's some squash soup. And let's go ahead and take one of our crostinis, a little crispy garlic bread. And that there, I think, is a beautiful bite. Let's go ahead and try some. Mm. This is a great way to get your veggies, your fibers, give your kids veggies and fibers. Even if they think they don't love it, don't tell them what it is. Tell them it's cheese or something. It is absolutely delicious. You are going to love it. I hope you enjoy. And please don't forget, make sure to comment and tell me what you think. I hope that you try this at home. See you next time here on Beautiful Bites. Mmm. Mmm. Did you hear that nice crunch? Delicious. Mm.